getting ready for another weekend. And That's you know right. what I love to do on weekends, Lorna? <laughs> I think I do. You preach a lot and you cycle. I like and hang out with my family too, but cycling is something that I have had a passion for for the last, uh, I guess the last couple of decades actually. And I like and to- how many go... kilometers do you like to ride? Well, I think, you know, maybe I'll go to work and back, so that might be 12. And then I, maybe in a good day, do 20, 30 kilometers. Excellent, excellent. I'm an indoor. Indoor okay. cyclist, twice a week indoors. I don't know. Safer, I guess, indoors. I don't trust all those people on the road. <laughs> I just don't. I know, and they come up on you, and all of a sudden they just zing by, and sometimes you feel like they almost brush you. It's, it's, it can be a little dangerous well, out there. Well, we all have to get used to it because we're seeing more cyclists because mm -hmm. we're all trying for a greener world. But, boy, have we got a cyclist who's got a cause for us. This is, you know, sometimes people have a 50th birthday crisis. Jim Zvonier has done an amazing thing for his 50th birthday. He's a teacher from Stony Creek, mm -hmm. and he's gone coast to coast. Yeah, British Columbia to Newfoundland. All right. Okay, let's see if we can get Jim on Skype here. Jim, are you there? I am, Lorna. Oh, well, listen, congratulations. It's just super that you've had this um, cross-Canada cycle. What, what motivated you to get on your bike at your 50th birthday day after Canada Day, and say, I'm on. Well, I've always wanted to do it. I picked up a book in my 20s, Cycling Canada, and I thought it would be the most amazing thing to do. And it has been so far. It's just been <laughs> terrific. You know, you're looking pretty good for a guy that just cycled across the country. Now, I know for you personally, though, this is something that's deep in your heart because of what you were trying to do. Tell us about the, the whole aspect of, of suicide prevention and what motivated you. Well, I've had three family members pass away uh, to suicide. Um, the, the latest was my brother-in-law, which really kind of rocked the foundations of our family. Um, I've had the opportunity to join up with the Suicide Prevention Community Council of Hamilton, and uh, they provide grants to high schools who have programs, awareness programs, to reduce stigma and raise awareness of uh, mental illness in the schools which seems, seems to be a rising problem in schools these days, um, as we've seen as teachers. And we really don't have the, the skills or the programs or the background to cope with that. So SPCCH is helping out. Hmm. How fantastic that as a school teacher, you're saying, I want to raise the mental health awareness. Um, give us your advice for all of us sending kids back to school. Uh, any thoughts on that? for suicide and mental health preventions as we send kids back to school? I think there's a lot of pressure on kids these days in school to do well. Um, the work in the, going out into the workforce, getting into post-secondary programs. And I think parents put a lot of pressure on the kids. Um, you have to think, have to kind of let them work to their potential and be proud of what they can do with, with the skills they have. And what I've noticed is Kids generally make their own way in the world after school, um, and they become successful in their own ways. Wow, so suicide prevention, to hear you know a teacher feel that there's just too much pressure going on. Your whole cycle across Canada this summer, you met a lot of people. What did you hear about suicide as you cycled close to coast for that cause? Well, amazingly enough, before I started my ride, once I started talking about the ride itself and the cause behind it, there were so many people that approached me and opened up about issues that they had, uh, people at school, people outside of school. And it's, it's really amazing to find out how many people struggle with mental illness. And it was really nice to see them come out and talk about it and be frank about their situations with me. Now, how was it for you, Jim, in your own healing process, losing your brother-in-law and two other family members? to be talking about this, including with your students, how, how is that for them and how is that for you in terms of your going through this difficulty? Quite honestly, it, it, it's a difficult topic for me to talk about and not because it's suicide, because of knowing the person and knowing what they went through. Um, again, especially with my brother-in-law, uh, you've seen that downward spiral that he went through and it's hard to believe that um, his final option was um, taking his own life. So that's the hardest thing. 
Well, thank you very much, Jim, and the website cyclingc2c.ca. Appreciate your courage and what you've done in bringing up uh, this very important topic. And I think, Lorna, one of the key things you, is there's so thank much you. stigma attached to this whole thing. Absolutely. Well, Jim, thank you for riding across the country to bring awareness. Wow, uh, drastic action for a drastic topic. Uh, and so I guess that's a real wake-up call for us that, you know, we need to keep setting aside some yeah. focused time to, to deal with the topic of suicide. 4,000 Canadians die every year by suicide. Um, it's the second most common cause of death among young people, and about 20% of suicides involve alcohol or substance abuse. And so uh, as World Suicide Prevention Day comes this weekend, Sunday, September 10th, what a great time to pray about that in our churches. What a great time for us here to be talking about that at 100 Huntley Street.